There's such an emphasis upon couples working together and the marriage needs to be nurtured just as much as uh, the, the skills and the ability to present uh, what you offer. Because uh, if a couple comes in to work with a family and there's tension between them and they're not getting along, it's going to come out. And what a great opportunity to present a role model of a marriage that is functioning well in the marital arena as well as functioning well in working together. Because there's a lot of thinking out there today about, oh, they can't work together, that'll ruin the marriage. It's just like trying to teach your spouse your hobby. Each person who comes to a marriage comes with certain gifts, certain strengths. And um, one of the things that happens in marriage is that you, in a sense, fill up the empty places. You rely on those uh, unique qualities in your partner. Um, one of the problems that happens with a number of couples is that you marry and then you discover the person is much more different than you ever realized. And you begin to equate differentness with wrongness. And it's not that it's wrong, it's just you're threatened by it, you're challenged by it. And one of the things, one of the themes that we try to get across to couples is to learn to celebrate your differentness. Look at the other person and say, wow, you're really different than I am. And that is good. I can learn from you. And having the attitude of being a learner, being a student in a marriage as you look at your partner makes all the difference in the world. Attitude is everything. Attitude is at the heart of it. What got us through raising a profoundly mentally retarded boy was attitude. In James chapter 1, it says, Count it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter different trials, for the trying of your faith produces endurance and patience. Because when a couple can uh, pull together and they're in harmony and uh, they have the same goals, there's a greater strength there than trying to do it individually. Oh, it's, it's very important. We should never, never stop learning. Uh, when somebody comes into me for counseling, I know this person, even though they're there for me to help them, I am going to learn from them. I see them as my teacher in a sense. And especially as we get older, because I'm in the 70s decade myself, um, we try to do things that cause us to continue to learn because um, the brain can still develop even if you're in your 70s or your 80s and you want to keep it alive and vibrant. And so I take in new information. I try different things, new things that might challenge me, but I want to continue to learn. And as a married couple, you never want to get to the place where it stagnates, where you just get into the ho-hum routine. You don't have to think about it. You try to be creative as long as you're married. And stretch yourself. Find new information. Come up with new topics. Um, develop a hobby together and learn from one another and not be threatened because the other person might do it better. And we as men tend to be threatened if our wife has giftedness in some areas and so we avoid that. But it's okay to be dependent upon one another and learn from one another whether you're male or female.